is a chemical reality in the bloodstream based on what the brain has secreted in the process of translating that emotion from the emotional body to the physical body. It has been talked about that this emotion of fear actually can be the invisible source that makes all of us susceptible to any pathogen, whether it be the AIDS virus, the uh, latest virus that causes influenza, Lesionnaire's disease, anything in our environment can actually begin to have a pathological effect upon us if we choose to have a perception of fear around anything going on in our lives. Now that's awesome and I just want to just kind of sum that up for you that deciding that you are afraid of anything causes the brain to secrete neurotransmitters that will cause cells in the body to move into action in a suboptimal way that will then allow foreign invaders of a bacterial, parasitic, of a viral nature to now reside within the body. Now when we have insecurities or fleeting bouts of fear, we will notice that as we become more confident about ourselves, when we move back into a state of more harmony, more peace, or we're actually able to experience joy in our lives, none of these bacteria and viruses are actively causing symptoms in our body. And that's what we're really asking for when we talk about good health. We're talking about being able to live a life that causes us to be totally asymptomatic as far as having any indication that the body is not capable of doing what it is that it should do and what we ask it to do at any particular time. Now understand what I'm saying here clearly. I'm not saying that your blood might not contain a bacteria at any time or something that is a foreign invader. The chances are, however, if you are in harmony and in peace and joy, that we would not see these things in your body. But we do know that we're talking about a relative framework that these states of consciousness can be in from being comfortable and satisfied to being ecstatic, which are all forms of harmony, peace, and joy. But they do actually allow the cells to work at different levels that are beneficial to your existence. We see the same thing in relationship to anxiety states, all centered around this emotion known as fear, that depending upon whether the fear is a mild sense of just not being able to rise to the occasion, to the occasion only temporarily to totally feeling dis devastated and that you cannot continue to live will actually determine to what extent the cells in the body are going to be able to function. So if you've really been following what I'm saying, this information is really wonderful because what that means is, is that whether the virus was man-made, whether it was introduced through inoculations into the body, whether it was inhaled, whether it was acquired through sexual activity or through diet, you determine to what extent this virus will have its way in your body. So that means then that we have to then look at you as a whole and determine what is your level of present satisfaction and contentment. Do you feel in general that your entire life is really on the fringes and that if any additional legislation occurs or if there's an election of an individual that you don't necessarily agree with, etc., that now you feel that your life is going to take a turn for the worst. That is what I call fear of unknown recognition. And I say that it's fear of unknown recognition because most people feel that these types of anxieties are acceptable and that it's okay to actually feel less than competent when things do not go your way. 
Unfortunately, the physical body does not agree with you. The physical body states in its demeanor of how it likes to function that whatever the experience is, it likes to always be in comfort in moving through that experience. And we do know one thing, is that when we can allow our bodies to stay in comfort in an experience, we always come out clean as a whistle and as the victor. We can identify and have experience personally that when we become tense, fearful, inhibited, that we find things become, quote, as we say, hard, become rigid, difficulty in moving, difficulty in communicating, difficulty in opening up and sharing because we have decided to see ourselves as a victim or not having what we are capable of needing to master that experience. Now, that moves us to another level of investigating what's happening here. Let's look at how you feel about your capacity to master the experience. Do you feel that because there has not been a pharmaceutical drug invented or a vaccine created that you are not going to have the capacity to master AIDS if your blood is drawn and you're told that you're HIV positive? Is that a reason for you now to spend the rest of your life preparing for a funeral? And the question depends upon you and your value system, which is something that we now have to look at. You know, having done hundreds of deliveries, I found and observed something very, very interesting. Every individual that comes here, comes here with only themselves. They don't come with a little bag of pills on their side. They don't come with an inoculation needle. They don't come with a pharmaceutical drug. They don't come with a plate of food prepared on a platter that has actually been tied to them. They actually come with what you see when you are disrobed in the mirror. The sheer you. And we, to this very day, scientifically, biologically, have not been able to identify what the physical body cannot do. Now, let's think about that. Now, just as I've grown up here in the scientific community in this country, we were told at one point in time that if you lost a finger or a leg, that was just it that there was just no way that you were going to be able to have that sewn on. That was told to us that that was preposterous. And then all of a sudden we're finding out that yes, we could reattach bits of fingers. We could now reattach multiple fingers. We could now reattach a hand. Finally we re reattached arms. Finally we begin to recognize that we could actually do transplants of organs from one person to another whether they were related or not, we then began to recognize that we could actually have interaction with animal tissue on a higher level. That their tissue could now be utilized to hold a space within our own physical bodies because of a deficit. This is, happens all the time with burn patients. They are covered with the skin taken from particular high-bred pigs called porcine. So even in my short lifetime, I have seen the belief system be totally changed from saying that this is totally impossible, it could never happen, to now being a common day, everyday occurrence. As we have these examples around us that let us know that things do change and that things are possible, is it in our best interest to decide that AIDS is an incurable disease or to decide that any disease is incurable? Even is it in our best interest to decide that death is inevitable? Now that's an awesome thought, and we can talk about that at another session. But at this point in time, it's very important to think about how your thoughts and your belief systems really affect your physical body. A wonderful work on the effect of emotions, written by Lydia Tomaschuk, The Type C Connection, which is a wonderful treatise and study of over 10,000 patients with cancer, and their psychological makeup. She has indicated that each one of these patients had a common emotional state, repressed anger. And what is anger? 
Anger is an aggressive form of fear. And it had been noted that this repressed anger, as it was identified, becoming conscious now, and then transformed by the individual by deciding to see their experiences differently or to forgive those individuals that they thought had really done something that, to them that was not in their best interest, the blood chemistry changed. And as the blood chemistry began to change, tumor size also changed. Their capacity to be able to tolerate the conventional treatments for cancer also changed life expectancy became longer. So I have identified that this is a very, very important missing aspect from the treatment of the AIDS virus. And I talk about this treatment allowing us to have what's known by my writings as AIDS the condition. AIDS the condition stands for an advanced, integrated, divine human species. I'll repeat that. AIDS the condition is an advanced, integrated, divine human species. A-I-D-S. Now, what kind of person is this? How does a person manifest themselves as an advanced, integrated, divine human species. Well, I'm going to give you some do's and don'ts. Jot them down and remember that these do's and don'ts are chemical realities in your bloodstream that will determine your immune function. It's important for you to understand that we have discussed and have demonstrated that your level of physical health is 100% dependent upon your emotional and mental state. I'll repeat that. Your level of physical health is 100% dependent upon your emotional and mental state. If you emotionally are not happy and at peace and at joy, if you mentally are not happy, at peace, and in a state of contentment, there is dis-ease, which is now known as stress in the physical body, which definitely alters a, the state of the cells from functioning at their optimum. This allows you to be susceptible to whatever may be in your environment that can live in a bloodstream such as yours who is not contented and at peace and in harmony. So an advanced integrated divine human species is an individual that is capable of staying in a state of harmony, peace and joy all of the time irregardless of the experience. How? Well, what an advanced, integrated, divine human species does on a physical level is keeps the body bathed and showered, and at least twice a day now. Why? Because of all the pollutants in the air, the toxins now that we acquire from our clothing because of the uh, treatment of the fabrics, and especially if you're wearing synthetic fabrics, must be removed from the skin. The hair and nails must be kept clean. Too many of us feel that manicures, pedicures, professional hair care is ornamentation. It is not. It is a necessity to keep the end sensory organs of the body clean and activated. It's important to apply natural edible oils to the skin. There are so many cosmetics on the market now that contain all kinds of things, from horses to cow hoofs, to human placenta, to all kind of chemicals that immediately will enter the body through the skin. You must be aware that the largest mouth that you have on your physical body is actually your skin surface area. It is the largest organ of detoxification and absorption. So that means then that what you put on your skin should be edible. You should be able to drink it or chew it and eat it. And if you can't 
eat or chew your cosmetics, etc., then there's something not correct about putting them on your skin. Be very, very careful. Eat and drink clean foods and fluids, fresh vegetables, grains in season, fruits in season. And in season is defined by what is happening in your environment for a radius of 300 miles. That is your seasonal environment that you're responsible for. Clean water is extremely important. It has already been announced that most of our cities are now issuing through the public water system contaminated water, contaminated primarily with what? Lead. Now, on a physical level, what things do you avoid? You must avoid allowing yourself to live in an environment that is cluttered and dirty. This is not optimal. Trash, garbage, dirt, dust in the environment collects more of itself. And it causes the life force energy to be minimized and it actually causes a frequency of energy in your environment to actually drain the energies from the physical body. So it actually becomes a draining environment as opposed to an environment that is neutral or augments your present life force energy. We do not use drugs. It's important to understand that drugs are coffee, cigarettes, white sugar, and obviously street drugs. If you are presently dependent on pharmaceutical drugs for high blood pressure, for diabetes, for heart disease, etc., it's very important that you also augment your therapy with finding out what you can do for yourself as far as exercise, change in diet, and most of all, change in mindset. There are wonderful programs out now for meditation for individuals with high blood pressure. It does lower the blood pressure. It has been identified that people can get off of the pharmaceutical drugs when they do meditate and eat properly and are active. It has been demonstrated that heart disease is changed when individuals meditate, exercise properly, eat properly. It has been demonstrated that diabetics require less, less insulin when they exercise properly, when they eat properly, and most of all, when they are in a constant state of harmony and peace. It appears that diabetics have a real issue with deep-seated sense of bitterness based on past experiences. So I recommend that all diabetics receive lifestyle support and put yourselves in a lifestyle support group. This is a group of individuals that come together to remind themselves and each other of the importance of making sure that they do the do's of my advanced integrated divine human species lifestyle and refrain from not committing acts against themselves based on exposure to environmental pollutants, attitudes, and lifestyles that could create a disharmonic bloodstream leading them to be susceptible to disease. Eating meat. This is a really big controversy and it's very, very important to have quite a bit of information on board as to how you should behave in this area. It has been identified that the melanin dominant race, Africans primarily, especially those that are truly pigmented, that have what we call the eumelanin, that are brown skinned, black skinned, navy blue skinned, do not do well eating concentrated animal fats and proteins from an animal source. The amount of protein and fat needed by individuals that have eumelanin is very, very small compared to the Caucasian or compared to much more fairer races. So therefore, having that information on board, it's very important to act accordingly. Also, it's very important to understand where your sources of meat come from. Are they contaminated with arsenic, which is a problem with the chickens? Are they contaminated with steroids and or antibiotics, which is a problem with all forms of meat, especially beef and pork? If these contaminants are present, then they will be passed on to you from your meat source and can adversely affect the chemistry of your body. The consumption of synthetic beverages. What are synthetic beverages? Anything that does not naturally occur in nature. And that's most of the beverages that we drink, ironically, 
except for those beverages that we at least know have an origin of naturality that perhaps might come from a tea leaf or flower, etc. Synthetic beverages specifically, such as soda pops, carbonated beverages, definitely have altering effects upon the acid-base balance of the bloodstream, which can immediately affect the immune system. So we must be very careful about that. Advanced integrated divine human species do not eat one of the most insidious and unspoken about drugs that has invaded modern society, known as white sugar. White sugar, as we know, does not naturally exist in nature. It is a process that man puts extracts from beets, from sugar cane, and from other plants that have high contents of carbohydrates and removes the B vitamins from the surface of the liquid or of the powdered aspect of that plant. When the B vitamins are removed, which gives a brownish, yellowish cast to the sugar, it then becomes white. We have found that this pure substance of sucrose, when taken into the bloodstream, sets a foundation of neurologic and chemical imbalance when taken over long periods of time that can stimulate the need to introduce further drugs into the body at a later date. This story was released this year, done on research on children, indicating the proclivity of children to search for and introduce other drugs into their body after being introduced to white sugar on a continuous basis in their diets. So we know that white sugar definitely causes many, many problems. Now on the mental level, an advanced integrated divine human species releases all judgments and perceptions of people and experiences that create pain and discomfort and is only willing to extend love and forgiveness for self and others regarding and involving all experiences of the past and in the present. Now that's very, very important. Most of us have not learned how to do that. We still are harboring anger, resentments, hurts, and a lot of pain around experiences from the far past in childhood, adolescence, and in the recent past in adulthood. All of those experiences, whether they occurred at two years of age or they occurred yesterday, are recorded in all the cells of the body and are present in your bloodstream as a chemical reality. The perception of these experiences will determine the activity of the cells of your body today. There is a identifiable amount of stress, which is a chemical reality in the body, that will cause the cells to lose the capacity to function at a rate that will sustain health. This varies based on constitution. It also varies based on chronicity and concentration of the neural toxins, I call them, secreted by the brain based on your perception of experiences that were less than loving and peaceful to you. The advanced integrated divine human species also is continuously checking the self-esteem quotient. What do I mean by that? I mean that if you can identify that you are settling for less as far as your state of employment, as far as your relationships, as far as how you treat yourself. Do you recognize that you need a new wardrobe, that you do need body care, dental care, that you need actual physical care, and you are refusing to give it to yourself under the illusion of finances or lack of time, etc.? This is representative of low self-esteem. Individuals who will not give to themselves what they need to maintain a high quality body, a high quality life, are having problems with self-esteem. It's very important for you to begin to alter that type of behavior. Perhaps the ultimate
treatment that you would like to experience, you may not be able to give to yourself today, but you can at least begin part or step one of that action or be experience what you would desire to a lesser extent on a daily basis, which will ensure that in the future you will be able to experience the quality of that particular action ultimately. That's very, very important. It's better to do a little something today than nothing at all. The Advanced Integrated Divine Human Species gives praise and thanks to who or whatever that makes them feel contented, joyful, and loved. Now this is a really big problem and this is a foundation for a lot of the sexual orientated diseases that we have. The incapacity to share with another how you truly feel about them. There are all kind of belief systems around why you don't share your deepest feelings with the man or the woman that you truly want to be with. Manipulation, control, insecurities, all of these belief systems create a bloodstream that makes you susceptible to infections. And here in question, the AIDS virus. The advanced integrated divine human species will do whatever it is necessary to strike out against understanding what could create a fearful environment for them. Understanding that fear is self-created, it is an emotion which is based upon attaching a thought to a feeling. The key tool that eliminates and eradicates fear is information. The most negligent state that we can stay in is one of ignore rants. If there's something that truly disturbs you, immediately you must begin to do the research to understand and get as much information about it as much as possible. This disarms the mystique. It disarms the unawareness that you are not able or did not have the capacity to master that experience. You do. Do recognize that looking at many TV shows,